Hey guys, and welcome back to another machine learning tutorial with Python. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about SVM and how support vector machines work. So SVM obviously stands for support vector machines, and these are going to be used, at least in our purposes, for classification, although we can use them for something known as regression, which I talked about in the first few videos, uh, but I'm not going to be explaining that here. So essentially, uh, really basically, how SVMs work is they attempt to create something known as a hyperplane. And a hyperplane is something that can divide your data using uh, hopefully something that's straight. So like a plane is straight, a uh, what do you call it? A line is straight. You can have like four dimensional stuff. So anything that's straight, right? So like a linear way to divide your data. Um, so essentially a hyperplane for the data set that I have up here could look something like this, right? And you can see that it's dividing our data points. Uh, so green is on this side and red is on this side, right? Now, how do we create this hyperplane? What are like the parameters for it? Like what do we need to do to you to do this? Well, the, the requirements for a hyperplane essentially are that you find, or the hyperplane, sorry, is uh, the same distance from the two closest points of each opposite class. That's confusing, but I'll, I'll draw it out. And essentially, and the closest point to the line now is this red point. And the closest point from the green side is actually have to draw a new one to make sure that this works well. Let's do one like here. Is this green point that I just drew, okay? So these are the two closest points to the line from either class. This red point is the closest and this green point is the closest, okay? And the distance between this red point in the line and this green point in the line are the exact same. So imagine if we start tilting the line this way, then obviously this red point's gonna be closer and this green point's gonna be further away, right? So just just you can picture that, okay? So these two points are the closest points to the line and the distance between them and the line is the same. That's how we generate a hyperplane. So with that information, we actually now know that we can generate an infinite amount of hyperplanes for this data set. Another hyperplane could look something like this, where the two closest points are this green point and this red point and their distance to the line is the exact same. Okay, we can draw all kinds of different hyperplanes, uh, but which ones are the best, right? So for example, I could probably, I'm gonna try to do one like this. Uh, we could say that like this point and this point are the two closest points to the line and their distance is the same from the line. And that again is another hyperplane. Now, how do we pick which hyperplane to generate? What is the best one? What is gonna give us the best result? So essentially, since I didn't really talk about it, um, when anything on this side of the hyperplane is going to be green, right? For when we're predicting and anything on this side is going to be red. That's essentially how we're going to use this hyperplane. But how do we pick the best one? Well, this one would probably be the best hyperplane to for our data set. And the reason is because the two closest points to the line are actually um, the furthest possible points away, like the distance between them and the line. So let's say like this one and maybe uh, let's say this one, I know this one's a bit closer, but just imagine the same distance is the largest distance that we can generate. No matter what other points we pick or where we draw this line, there's no way that we can find a distance uh, D denoted by D that is greater than this. Now, why would we want this distance to be so, so big? Like, why would we want this distance to be as large as possible? Well, I'm going to just draw two lines here quickly. Uh, let's say like this, okay? And the distance uh, denoted by D and between these two points or like in between all this, right? So where there's no other points is known as our margin, okay? And we obviously, we want to maximize this margin. Now, why why is that the case? Why do we wanna do that? Well, let's think about it for, for a second, all right? So if I, I remove all this, okay? So let's erase, I don't wanna click that. Let's erase this line and let's draw another line. And let's compare that line that I just drew, so like that one, to the one I'm about to, to do. Okay, so let's say we have a point that we're trying to predict its class. And the point is right here. Well, what point do you think, as like a human, this should be? You think it should be green or you think it should be red? I would hope most of you would say it's green, but if we use a, uh, what do you call it, a hyperplane like this, it's going to classify this as red because it's on the left side of the hyperplane. So uh, why would we want it to be as large as possible? Because ones like this, if we had that, that same point that's somewhere around here, it's gonna be classified more correctly as green because the larger the distance and the larger the margin, the more we can separate the two classes uh, and do more accurate predictions. So essentially, 
that is the basis behind support vector machines. We're trying to find something like a line or a plane that we can separate our data points by. We want to find the largest distance between our what's known as support vectors, which is going to be this red one and this green one. Uh, and then we'll generate that hyperplane and we'll use it to predict data based on what side of the hyperplane it's on. Okay, that's the most basic understanding. Now let's talk about the problems that we run into when we do this. So right now we have data that is, in my opinion, quite nice, right? We look at this and we can tell really quickly um, that we're gonna have a line like this, that's what it's gonna look like, right? But what if we change this up a bit and we go to make, look at data that is not like this. It doesn't linearly kind of correlate. Like this is really nice data that is not common to find, especially in the real world when you're dealing with, well, real data and stuff that is not gonna look exactly like that. So let's do some red points. I'm not gonna do as many because I'm gonna do something with these in a second. And maybe they look like this. Okay, that's our red points. And maybe we have some green points. And our green points look something like this. Well, if I asked you, can you draw me a hyperplane for this? You would say, what? A hyperplane? Where where does the hyperplane go? Does it go like that? Does it go like that? Uh, does it go like that? We honestly have no idea <laughs> where to draw the hyperplane. And even if we can come up with one, is it going to be accurate? Because on here, we have no idea uh, if it's actually going to be red or green or if that's going to be a correct prediction. We're pretty much just guessing at that point. So what do we do to fix this problem? Well, we use something called kernels. Now, this is in two dimensions, right? So we have x2 and x1 as our features, and then red is green is denoting what the class is going to be, okay? So what we want to do is we actually want to turn this data into a form where we can draw a hyperplane or like an accurate hyperplane through it that divides our training data. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring this whole thing up. So this whole two dimensional data, we're going to bring this into three dimensions. And the way we do that is using something called a kernel. Now a kernel sounds confusing is essentially just a function. So you can have, have F, okay, denoting a function that takes inputs in this case is going to have x1 and x2 and spits out an output which is going to be x3 which is a higher dimension okay i'm going to show this in a drawing in just one second so it's going to take our two features x1 and x2 for every one of our data points and based on that input it's going to give us an output of x3 which is going to represent like the third coordinate for our points because we're going to go up a dimension we're going to go to three dimensions from two dimensions so if right now we have x1 and x2 for every one of our points we're going to be adding an x3 and then plotting it on a three-dimensional graph so let's erase this and let's do just that so three-dimensional graphs we're going to have our three axes so we'll keep this as x2 this is x1, and we'll draw one out like here, which is going to be our x3, okay? Now I'm just going to draw some red points and some green points. So we'll do some red ones, and we'll do some green ones. Now imagine that these are the same points that we had in two dimensions, right? So I'll draw a small graph here, just so you remember what it looked like in two dimensions, right? We had like red points and green points kind of all just scattered around in the middle. So I know this is not the same, but essentially when we go from this to this, now we look here and well, we can draw a hyperplane. Look at this, by generating that third point, we've successfully been able to divide our green points and our red points because of this third dimension, right? So if you imagine now you squish this back to two dimensions, then we're gonna come back to looking something like this, okay? So there, right, if we remove that x3 coordinate, but now that we have this and we've used this kernel, we can actually generate a hyperplane looking something like this that divides our uh, data. And this works the exact same as we did for hyperplanes in two dimensional space, where let's say like the distance here to this red point is the same as the distance here to this green point, And they're the two closest points to our plane. So I know this might be a bit confusing because I'm trying to explain a pretty complex topic like really simply and sometimes that even makes it more confusing. But essentially, if we have data that looks like this, right, in two dimensions and we can't classify it in two dimensions, like we can't draw a hyperplane, we can add a third dimension to it in hopes of getting data that looks like this, right, in hopes of getting a graph that looks like this. Now, obviously, this doesn't always work, right? So when we use this function, we use that kernel function, we get x1 and we get x2, uh, and that brings us to x3, maybe our data still is, is impossible to classify, right? Maybe we can't do a hyperplane through it. There's just, there's no way. Um, and we still get points over here and here, and they're all mixed up. In that case, 
we would repeat the process and add a fourth dimension to our data. Now I want to just talk about kernels a little bit more because I feel like some people might have still have no idea what they are. Essentially, it's just a function that takes our features. So in two dimensions, we so here we had x2 and we had x1 and we fed that into the function. It did something with it and it returned to us a third dimension. And then with that third dimension, right, we can now plot our data. And by using that third dimension, we've spread our data out. We went from like only being on this plane, right, in two dimensions, and we've just brought it up and down so that we can divide it by hyperplane. So I hope that makes sense. All kernel is, is a function. There's all different kinds of kernels. Um, you typically don't create your own. You just use an existing kernel. And an example of a kernel could be something like x1 squared plus x2 squared. This is a kernel. This is perfectly fine. And that would result in the value x3, right? So say this is our point. And in two space, its coordinates is like one and two, okay? If we want to turn this into a thir three coordinate or a, a 3D uh, object or point, we take x1 squared plus x2 squared. So we get one plus four because two squared, right? And that gives us the value five. And now we have as our, uh, let's actually, let's draw it here, I guess. We have as our coordinate point one, two, and five. And that's what we plot here. And we hope that by applying this kernel, it's going to make all of our red points kind of maybe either shoot up and all of our green points go down or go to the side or something that we can draw an accurate hyperplane for. So that is essentially how a support vector machine works. Um, I'm not going to go any further than this because if I keep going, it's just going to get way more confusing and way more math. There's a ton of stuff behind how we generate this and how we do this. This is a super high level understanding. Um, now you kind of know enough to be able to implement this and so we can kind of tune some parameters and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, that is essentially uh, all there is to SVM. There's one more thing, which is like a soft, um, what do you call it? A soft margin, a hard margin, which I'll cover really quickly. But there's a reason I left it to the end. It's not that important. Um, essentially, like if we have our two dimensional data like this, I'll do really quick because I don't want to waste any more time. Uh, but let's see, we have some pink points or purple points. All right. Uh, and we have some red points like this. Okay, well, we can again, we can draw our hyperplane. And right now you might say, okay, so the hyperplane is going to have to look something like that. But that might not be a great hyperplane to draw. And what we a hyperplane we might want to draw instead is something that looks like this. Now you're saying, well, we, we can't do this hyperplane. And you're, you're correct right now, based on what I've told you, because, well, this point is, uh, what do you call it? It's the closest point to the line. And uh, like we're not using that because we're going to use this and this is our support vectors for this this hyperplane and this red point. You're like, well, that can't be there. That, that's incorrect. Well, you're, you're correct right now, but this is where we introduce something called a soft margin. So if we're saying that this is our uh, what do you call it? Support vector and this is our support vector. We'll draw these and we'll say that we're going to use something called a soft margin and we're going to allow for a few points like this to exist in between the margin. We're going to say, you know what, by allowing these kind of outlier points to exist, we're actually going to get a better classifier with our, uh, what do you call it, hyperplane here. And that's fine. So that's another parameter that we can, we can tweak, we can give something called a soft margin, allowing a few points, or however many we say, to exist inside this margin and not affect the hyperplane. So that's another parameter. If you're using a hard margin, essentially all that means is what I've taught before. You can't have any points like this, like this red, this is not a valid uh, hyperplane, but with the soft margin, this is fine. So there it is. That's it for support vector machines. Please feel free to uh, contact me on Discord, ask me any questions, leave some questions in the comments. I try to respond to everyone. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like. And in the next video, we're going to be getting into implementing this algorithm.